there's something different, very different about this uh, new Range Rover Sport. It's not the tail lines, it's not the exhaust, not the rear glass. Aha, got it. We have the new 2023 Range Rover Sport. This thing is pretty special. For today's video, special thanks goes to our good friends at Bud's JLR for allowing us to shoot this beauty over here indoors. Yes, they have an indoor showroom that we're going to use today to show you everything you need to know about the new Range Rover Sport. If you wanna know more about them, don't forget, check out the link in the description below if you wanna come and take this for a test drive because I believe they do have a demo that you could probably test drive. But don't forget, there's a shortage right now, so things move quickly. Special thanks also goes to Mark, who is kind enough to help us for today's video and arrange everything you've seen here. With that in mind, let's start talking about this beauty. You're probably wondering, wait a minute, the thumbnail was a different color. Yes, that's true. The reason is because this is fully loaded. It's a nicer trim, therefore they gave us this. So the driving part is going to be with the different color, but it's the same engine, same specs in terms of the suspension. So let's start first with the exterior. And the first thing that I mentioned in the intro is of course the frame for the license plate. In comparison to the outgoing model, this has the license plate at the bottom the previous generation had it at the top. Tail lights, different LED, of course, tail lights, much thinner, but yet muscular, love that. Blacked out sports, so you know it's a Range Rover Sport. We have the letters across at the back that people in the back can read that this is a Range Rover. At the bottom, aggressive diffuser, this is the P400 and look at those massive exhausts. Now the style of the exhaust is very much like the outgoing model, not too different there. We have that chrome finish around it, the diffuser, very, very aggressive. Then the top part over here, we have the spoiler, which is kind of similar to what you find in the outgoing model. This is the third generation Range Rover Sports and we have the actual brake light at the top. But as you can see, the actual wiper is not here. Why? Because it's hidden completely inside. And if you come closer here, look at how much space you get. I love that design. The next thing we wanna talk about is the side profile. And if you look carefully, the actual tail lights are seamless. I love that. Beautiful finish, not extended out. Everything was perfect. In terms of the wheels, this has the 22 inch wheels, but you can opt out for the 23, which of course can cost you more. One thing I noticed in comparison to the outgoing model is this line over here. The center line in comparison to that kind of like goes down like a slope. This is more balanced and straight. But then the rear side, look at that. Beautiful, similar design. And at the top, we got two fins. One is for the camera, one is for the actual antenna, but the camera is more for the actual rear view mirror. Then, another thing that I noticed, the door handles. You see the door handles in comparison to the outgoing model, these are the new that they're using for the new models. So they're hidden in when you close it, you tap that, they hide right in. And don't worry about the snow because I've already done the test. You press that and here you go. And of course it has the hidden key inside in case if these don't work. And most importantly, soft closing, rear and front. The actual mirror, very similar. Brakes, the customer has opted out for the black Bramble brakes. These are big brake kits with this package and it does have air ride. We'll talk about that when we go for a test drive. Now let's get to the front because this is where things get very muscular and I love the design of this. First of all, headlights skinnier led headlights beautiful design and what i love about it flash completely absolutely love that the grill very similar design to the outgoing model so you have the headlight you have the headlight but they're right beside each other this is just larger than the headlights for the grill but i love that very similar and you have range rover letters at the top the bottom part again more muscular then we have this part here for the grill new design grill over here new design parking sensors the plates is at the bottom absolutely love what they have done with this car and the design 
they haven't gone too much from the outgoing model, but yet sort of more refreshed, more muscular, more sporty. That's one thing I love about the new Range Rover. Let's talk about space and specifically the trunk area. First of all, there's a few ways to fold the seat in the second row. There's two buttons over here that you can do so by pressing this on the side. There's also a spare tire now underneath. So that way, in case if you get stuck somewhere, you got yourself a spare tire. And I believe these are the actual original wheel as well. Look at that. Nice, it's not like a normal spare tire. Space-wise, you get a bit more with this generation, but you lost the third row, so it's not an option anymore for the third row. It's only a second row Range Rover, which is not the best in comparison to the BMW X5, which does offer a third row. But let's be honest, the third row usually is not that useful because it's very, very small. In terms of everything else in technology, well, very similar. We have a power lift gate as well. You have this cover at the top, nothing crazy. There's a bit of space on this side and on the left side if you need to put something that is long, but other than that, quite spacious. Now let's get into the second row. jump into the second row and you're welcomed by this amazing interior that the Range Rover Sport offers, including the beautiful leather seats with two-tone colors specifically for the interior, like the exterior, which has the Forenza red exterior with a black roof. So it's a two-tone as well, in and out. The interior, of course, has received some major updates, including the seat design, the door panels as well, specifically now it is a new design, including the switches. We have a little button on the side here for the recliner. And you also have that fake one that makes you think that is actually a button, but it's not. It's just there for design purposes. It doesn't look awkward. It looks like a proper seat. Then the door panel has more details. So you look at that beautiful glossy black finish than that beautiful leather included on the side. And on top of that, we have this little material fabric used for the door panels specifically which apparently a lot of people are not a fan of it i don't mind it i enjoy it but then the top side we have a different color which is of course leather in terms of tech features well we have a beautiful panoramic roof all the way across which you can only open at the front the back side also has a beautiful sunshade going across in terms of other tech features we have heated seats for both passengers in the back we have this beautiful armrest in the center with two buttons over here. One is for the cup holders and the other one is you can put your phone in there or your keys or even coins if you have any change. Not sure that people that pay 160 grand are worried about some coins. Other than that, nice and spacious inside. I love the sitting position here and don't forget I'm 6'2", so I'm taller than the average individual. So this is a perfect demonstration of how much space you get in this thing. And another thing I love, is the handle at the top while you're going off-road with this beautiful monster. And there's a little button here that you can hang your shirt. Everything else, very futuristic, new design, very luxurious, good material. I love the feeling of the door panel, the leather, it's nice and thick. Even the door itself, it's pretty heavy when you close it. And I love that feeling that it gives you because you're paying quite a lot of money for this thing. Other than that, pretty standard here. Nothing crazy that I wanted, it's maybe like screens, none of that with this uh, actual package. Now, let's jump into the front because that's where the good things are. One second. What did I press here? Come on. There we go. Just a mirror. Um, where was I? Interior. This thing in the front is a totally different design. Absolutely love what they've done with this. Very user friendly. We got the beautiful screen behind the steering wheel, which is nice touch, nice finish, everything. The buttons on the left side, the buttons on the right side, touch, press, haptic style. We have a heads up display, massive heads up display. But what I love the most about Range Rover Sport in general is the sitting position for someone my height. In most cars, I'm either looking down or looking up. This one is sort of like faced straight into where I need it to be. I have all the information here. Massive screen for the cluster. Then we have a massive 13.1 inch infotainment display. That looks like a laptop in the middle, but you still get buttons. And that's where a lot of companies 
fail to do is that they put too many things into the infotainment. This still have button. You have your climate uni here for easy access. This is not extremely new because we've seen this in the iPace, like for example, to press down to change the temperature. You have the ventilated seats, heated seats, power seats, of course, for both sides. We have the gear knob, small, easy to use. They haven't gotten rid of that completely, which I absolutely appreciate. Put into drive, you put into sport, press that button over there, it goes into park. We have different driving modes here because don't forget, this is, the DNA of this car is for off-road as well. So this is not just for day-to-day. -day. If you wanna go a little bit off-road towards your cottage, well, guess what? You got the different driving modes here. And what I love are the little details. You press that, you hide the knob completely. You can change different driving modes. You have downhill assist, but everything in this thing just feels so welcome and so nice. And the car is on as I'm talking but yet I don't hear the engine as much. The seats are absolutely amazing. We have multiple ways to adjust the seats. I love how thick the bottom part is and so soft in comparison to the outgoing model. And we have these beautiful door handles on the side. It has a rear view mirror over here that turns into a camera, which I showed before at the top. The screen is easy to use. It is touch and you can, listen to that. You can hear the click. So it's not that you're tapping. It works well. Next thing, the actual wireless charging pad, which you don't see it around here. So it's underneath. So that way it doesn't bother. And guess what? My 14 Pro Max fits in perfectly. Not like my M3, which it's actually useless for me. Then in the center, two cup holders, of course, most importantly. And guess what? When you pull this thing, there's a little secret to clean this up. And there's a button right in the front you got more space underneath. This thing is full of space. Then more space over here. In here you can put some coins, something that maybe you need to use, but then most importantly, there is more space there. And if you look carefully underneath here, more space. The actual glove box, it is automatic. So what you do, press that and it lowers, but that's split in two. So you have the bottom part and then you have the top part. Look how much space you get in this thing, which I absolutely love. And most importantly, they didn't get rid of the armrest here. You got an extra armrest and you can adjust that based to your needs. And it's for both passenger and driver. And I love this piano black style, but yet you still get that leather on the dashboard. So it's not gonna be that hard to maintain this thing, except this area. The steering wheel, skinny, yet comfortable with the paddle shifters in the back. Love that. Cluster digital. I can't, you just can't go wrong with this thing. Full of luxury, yet sporty at the same time a little bit. I like it. I like it quite a lot. Try to catch me howling at the moon. Let's talk about the specs and how it drives. Well, first of all, this uses a three liter inline six. I know I keep saying V6 in some cases, but it's actually an inline six. It makes 395 horsepower. That's one of the engine options. And it is turbocharged. Unfortunately, we don't get a diesel in uh, Canada, in Europe, if you're watching this from Europe. And I think in India too, probably you get a diesel, not in Canada. In terms of the trims, well, there is the first version, which starts at $101,000 Canadian, $83,000 US. In the US, you get three trims. In Canada, you got the HSE, SE, the S Sport as well. The HSE starts at about $123,000. That's again, a three liter inline six that makes 434 horsepower. And there's gonna be a plug-in hybrid version of this. And most importantly, potentially in the future, it might be an electric, fully electric. You can place an order. I was told at the dealership, great people at Buzz JLR that you can order the uh, plug-in hybrid at this point, but of course the ETA on those, it's, well, let's just say, it's gonna be a while till you get one. The top trim for Canada is the first edition, which uses a 4.4 liter V8, turbocharged gasoline, of course, with an eight-speed automatic transmission. They all have eight-speed automatic transmissions. And that one is the first edition, it's $133,000 Canadian, but that gives you 523 brake horsepower, which is again, pretty impressive. What I do like about this is the fact that 
you can get a plug-in hybrid because these are big vehicles. Fuel efficiency, some people might be important. The model we have for today's video uses, of course, an air ride, which is superb. In the US, in terms of trims, well, the US only gets three. The highest trim, I believe, is the autobiography, which is something that we don't get in Canada. In the US, the PHV model starts at about $104,000 USD. In Canada, we have about 120 or so, but they do get a hybrid. They get an autobiography in the US, which uh, that one makes 434 horsepower with the twin turbocharged PHV, which is technically straight from a BMW. It's a ZF. They work with BMW, so it's not that hard to understand that part. In terms of the driving dynamics, one thing that I love about this car when you jump in is super quiet. It's super quiet inside that you can barely hear anything. And because these models are so similar with other vehicles that in the lineup, it's easy to use the infotainment display. And of course the cluster now is fully digital, which I absolutely love the design of it. And I love keeping it in this current design, which is now, I don't like the one that shows the full map because you lose a bit of information. In terms of the adaptive suspension system, this uses the new generation, second generation technology. And what it does is that it monitors the external factors, meaning the road, the cracks on the road, the bumps and all that. And up to 500 times per second, it delivers the perfect ride. That's how good this thing is. It uses, of course, an all wheel steering, which is very important, a vehicle this large. And most importantly, this one has a new electronic active differential. And it has, of course, torque vectoring with braking. The all wheel steering provides up to 7.3 degrees of turning for the rear wheels which is not the highest. I believe the Mercedes can go up to 10 degrees or so. It also has the new generation active noise cancellation. It is genuinely the quietest SUV I've driven so far. I'm right now in sort of traffic. There is a big truck on my right side. There is one in the front, a big trailer truck, and I can barely hear anything. You can have a conversation inside with the passengers without even raising your voice whatsoever. And that's, to me, is important when you pay, well, a lot of money for this, especially because it starts over $100,000 in Canada, which also means that the new generation now is a bit more expensive. I love what they've done with this thing and the way it rides on the road, the comfort level, the space. One thing that I love about these is how you, how low you sit as an as an SUV, because most of the time I feel a bit uncomfortable with my knees, especially for someone my height. This though does a fantastic job overall. I love how it looks in the front. I love how aggressive it looks in the back. The comfort level, I, words couldn't describe how good this thing drives. The power delivery is there too, but if you wanted to, you could probably just get the 4.4 liter V8. It will give you a ton of horsepower. I'd say that is, uh, better option in some way. I, I like how this thing drives. I love the comfort level. I love the pickup power too when you need it. The soft suspension system. I Words could not describe this thing. You'd have to actually sit in here for you to understand how good this car drives in my opinion. It's quite possibly one of the nicest SUVs I've driven so far in 2022. It I could be here on a long trip for six hours and this thing is brilliant love it love what they've done with this thing 